Serial pooper. We had a presumably homeless man taking really horrendous messy craps in our alleyway for several months. I wish I was trolling. I wish I was kidding. I mean, he did other weird stuff back there too, but that particular behavior was the most poignant. For the longest time, the people in my building thought there was a sick animal in the neighborhood, because he would grunt loudly when he did it. You couldn't really see him from the building, because there was a large privacy fence in the way, and that alley was pretty creepy and poorly lit, so none of the tenants really went back there. But eventually, people in the neighborhood got hip to what was going on, dog walkers saw him, etc. We started calling the police, but by the time the police would get there, he would either hear them coming and run or be already finished with his business. One day, one of the tenants got sick of his literal and figurative shit and went out there with some mace and maced the Jesus out of the poor guy and bounced like a bad check. A few nights later, a group of high school kids were back there, probably to smoke weed or something like that, and we knew this because they came running around to the front of our building screaming and alerted our doorman. They noticed a fire and a man running down the alleyway. He had packed a paper bag full of his own shit, presumably waited for pedestrians to come by and set it on fire. Yeah, okay. So maybe he did to somebody in middle school and Piper's sister-in-law did that in orange and the new black, whatever, right? Well, upon further examination, there were already thinly veiled threats written in feces on the wooden privacy fence, stuff like murder and kill and reasons unknown. Cunt. The man was angry enough that he wrote words in his own shit on our fence. So, creepy loaf pincher, let's never meet. Do you like to take baths? I worked at a shipping store about 10 years ago and became very familiar with the clientele. I lived and worked in a secluded area of town, so you only really had occasion to use your shop if you lived very locally. The store was tiny and was only manned by one or two employees at a time. I was always alone from 4 to 6 and closed the store. One particular regular always struck me as odd. He had straggly unkept hair and wore a dingy t-shirt and ill-fitting jeans. I would guess he was in his early 40s. He would come in weekly and ship a single heavy, small box, always the same size, shape, weight. Not too strange, except he would send them to the order, in quotations. I remember asking if that was a business for shipping reasons and he just said no and gave the strangest smile. On the shipping form under the contents portion, he always wrote simply, supplies. He was always polite, but I was usually left unsettled because his eyes would linger on mine for just that second too long. I assumed he was just an awkward guy with a weird hobby, or maybe something illegal, that I didn't want to look too far into anyways. I didn't give the guy too much that, but I did wish he would come in earlier when the male coworker was there, instead of always at the end of the day when I was alone. Well, one day, he came in just before closing, and I was processing his usual shipment. Out of nowhere, he looks me up, and he asks, So, do you like to take baths? I immediately looked up to find his face, looking creepily normal. Like, that's a total standard question to ask the 18-year-old employee at the freaking shipping store? Uh, no, not re really, I stammered, not needing this guy to have a visual of my bathing habits. Oh, okay. Couple of beats go by, and I'm handing him his receipt. When you do take baths, does your skin get very wrinkly? Amelia, I replied, not that I've noticed. I was trying to keep as even as an expression as possible. Oh, I see. Mine gets really wrinkled. I guess it's because I like to stay in there far too long, you know? He gave me one last grin and turned on his heel to leave. You might like to take more baths. Very soothing. After a long day of work in school. I don't remember him coming in too often after that. Maybe he's just a lonely guy with a fetish. Or maybe he was checking into my skin and seeing if it was elastic enough to make me into a fucking lamp. Either way, Mr. Bubbles, let's... <sighs> let's not meet. Flower pot fetish. Excuse spelling and spacing issues. You can probably expect my paragraphs to start between sentences. I'm wild at grammar, but I've been lurking for quite a while now. 
and decided to share one of my few creeper stories. I also tried to break it up, but it's a wall of text-ish story. This particular story occurred about 10 to 11 years ago, so I would have been about 10 years old at the time. I'm female and 21 years old. I live in a small town in Northern Ireland, but not overly rural, not big city, thanks Seaside. This story is based around my mom more than me, but I remember everything that occurred, and parts of it while frightening are pretty funny, you'll see. At 10 years old, I was in school obviously, so during the daytime, my mom would walk me there and back because it was far and she didn't like me walking alone. Well, one of the days she returned home, only to see some odd looking fella lurking around the gate with his car engine still running. The gate itself is hard to open, huge with a metal latch on the top, and he seemed to be having trouble getting in. Halfway through doing this, he looked up furtively and spotted her. She asked him kindly what he was doing, and he said he had a delivery. My mom was like, yes, where is it? And he quickly decided he had the wrong house and hoofed it back to his car. Okay, mom decided he was odd as hell, but whatever, I guess. After this and during the date time, while I was at school, my mom kept hearing footsteps on our stones. We have them in our driveway, and you can't breathe without them making a sound. Fair enough. However, every time she checked the gate, was closed, and there was no one there. Cut to the washing line. Every time the washing went out, my mom noticed something was missing. Mostly or under her, literally. She said she'd lose a broad day, but put it down to my dad's washing dividing skills, men. Well, one of these weekdays, my mom was drying her hair at the front window and heard the gate. Footsteps on the stones. Oh, for fuck. This time the door knocks. Okay, not her imagination. So she waits and listens. Silent. She checks the window and the gate's closed. So she goes at the top of the stairs where you can see the front door and there's no one there. Now, she knows it's not her imagination, so she can only assume whoever it is is still creeping around the house. Something at this point makes her frightened. The whole vibe's wrong, so she calls the police. At this point, she's pretty scared, so she's in the bedroom with the door tight shut, waiting for them to arrive. When she hears the scream from the back garden, well, fuck the hiding, she shoots out the door and down the stairs where upon my neighbor is hand clean out her bathroom window screaming, pervert, at the aforementioned odd looking fella who was unsuccessfully hiding behind a sheet in my garden. He hot foots it over the back hedge like a bat out of hell, my neighbor still screaming bloody murder while my mom finds the scene more amusing than frightening and is pissing herself laughing in the kitchen. <laughs> When the police arrive, the whole neighborhood had congregated outside the front gate of my house to discuss the odd-looking fellow with the police, whereupon my neighbor tells all present that he stalked her for a while and keeps turning up at her work, asking for her phone number, and that it's probably her he's after, okay? Well, while they're all in raptures about her, my mom notices, across the road, a man with a ladder. This man looks familiar. He's also hiding behind said ladder. She calmly points out that the pervy fella is making a getaway behind a stolen ladder. One of the policemen who arrived, who was portly, apparently to say the least, attempts to give chase, but the man promptly drops the ladder and again escapes through the back gardens. He has returned to get his car, also stolen, which was parked a few houses up and which no one had noticed as unusual until now. Well, long story long, in the man's car, there is a vast array of stolen belongings spanning two counties, so it wasn't just my neighbor. Among these was a huge amount of underwear belonging to me and my mom, a TV, a few personal items from a garage, and oddly, a massive amount of flower pots. When they went to search his house, they also found his garden filled to overflow with stolen gnomes and flower pots of various sizes and abilities. He was convicted of being a thief and I'm not sure in what capacity, but apparently, of also being a pervert who was well known for it in his area. What's creepy is that he actually knocked on the door, which suggests he was looking for a way in, which suggests a probably bad endgame. Trust your instincts, folks. Sorry for the length. I have shitloads more, but not as lengthy. Let me know if you want to hear them. He really liked tickling. This was originally on the Weeb Stories thread, but some people said I should post it on here. Enjoy. This started back in January. My parents were having their friends come over for a barbecue. 
and their friends had a 15-year-old son. I just turned 13 and moderately like Pokemon. When the friends come over, I make decent small talk and the like with the parents and the kid. Just things like, how school, nice to meet you, etc, etc, etc. At this point, my little brother decides to have a scream off with a TV for some weird little kid reason. Annoyed, I go upstairs. Just as I sit down at my desk, I hear someone come up the stairs. It's the Pokeweeb. He says hi and sits on my bed. He knows a tin of Pokemon cards in the corner of my room and asks if I like Pokemon. I say yes, and he starts to talk about Pokemon, and if Pokemon are ticklish for some odd reason. He starts to ask me about puberty. I'm a female, so this is kind of weird. He starts to ask me what my what my bra size is, what my underwear look like, what boobs feel like, and the whole array of gross questions. At some point, he quacks a weird Jigglypuff joke. You don't need to guess what kind, I just sit there dumbfounded because A, I just turned 13 and didn't want anything to do with this kind of conversation and B, I just met this kid. Anyways, he starts to talk about how I look like one of the Pokemon, Ox, and how cute I would look like being tickled. I get up and walk downstairs into the safety zone of adults. He comes down after a while and his mom says it's time to go. I am so relieved at this point until he asks for my number. I'm about to refuse when my mom comes up and says, that's great, you two should exchange numbers to talk to each other. I then, grudgingly, give him my phone number. As he inputs the caller ID for my number, I notice as he puts Jiggly Chan as the nickname. He then says goodbye and leaves. I really wish that was the end. He starts to obsessively text me every day, even during school, asking to come over again and frequently talked about Pokemon. I ignore and delete his number, sick and tired of this creep constantly bothering me. I even changed my number to ensure I don't have to talk to him. About a week after purging him from my life, I'm sitting up in my room on my computer doing some homework. I hear the doorbell ring and the sound of my mom greeting and then chatting with someone. I hear footsteps going up the stairs and a horrendous sight appears once more in my room. It's him. He says hello, sits in my bed, and the creepy personal life details about him come up. He starts to talk about how his girlfriend left him because she didn't like his Pokemon talk, aka creepy Pokemon tickling fetish and how he can't believe it and how he needs someone to lean on. He starts to talk about maybe it's because his dick is too small. You're 15, don't talk about this stuff, especially to a 13 year old girl. Oh my freaking God. I just nod and continue typing. He then asks if I'm ticklish and when I don't respond, he takes it as a yes. He grabs me off of the chair and I try to fight back but I'm really weak and frail, and he pins me to my bed. He starts doing this creepy tickle groping to my breasts. As I try to keep the struggle away, I didn't want to scream because I was worried my parents or his parents might blame me. And at this point, he puts his goddamn hands under my shirt. I wasn't wearing a bra as my shirt was pretty thick, and I was just lounging around at home before he came. And again, he starts to try to grope my breasts, and now my nipple, more while tickling me. I'm crying and telling him to stop, please, please get off me, while trying to get his hands out of my shirt. He says since I'm laughing, he's tickling me seriously, that I must like it and want it, and how it's just role playing, and that I'm his little jiggly puff slave. I finally managed to kick him off of me and run into the laundry room and into the storage room. There's no lockings in the door, so I sit in a secluded corner, hoping to God that he doesn't find me and grope me again. I sit here for about 25 minutes until my mom calls me down to say goodbye to my friend. Since I don't want to get in trouble, I cautiously move downstairs, shielding my chest with my arms. I mutter bye. But before I move upstairs, he says, I hope you don't hate me, Anon-chan, because I want to play with you again. I ignore him and run upstairs and sit in my parents' room because I do not want to go into that bed again. I luckily didn't see or hear him again. I now hide all my Pokemon stuff especially the things in my room, and he's been banned from my house for eternity.